Drew here, Frisco Tennis Shop. Say you're out playing tennis, hitting around, and you notice when you're making contact, the racket will twist in your hands a little bit. Uh, it's a pretty common thing to happen in tennis, especially when you start playing against people who are hitting the ball pretty hard. In this video, I'm just going to discuss a few different reasons uh, for why the racket is twisting and a few different things that can help prevent the racket twisting at the point of contact. I'll talk about that coming up. First thing I would ask is what grip size are you using? I would say are you using a grip that's maybe too small? This is a 1 8 grip which for me as an adult would be a very small grip and if I use this grip I do have an over grip on it but if I use this grip there's a good chance I'd have racket twisting. A smaller grip gives you a lot of benefits as far as being able to pronate the wrist or turn the wrist on a serve but one downside it can be is racket twisting where you're not getting the support at the uh, point of contact. So one thing could be grip size. What I'd first recommend is trying to build up your grip size if you're at a one-fourth grip, uh, trying to put on maybe two over grips to see if you can get you closer to that three-eighths. Or if you're at three-eighths, get you a little bit closer to the half by putting on a, uh, more than one over grip. If necessary, you can put on a heat shrink sleeve. You just get rid of all grips, put on a heat shrink sleeve, and put the grip back on. That can build it up a grip or demo a grip that has a slightly bigger grip size, so from a 3 8 to say a 1 half. Uh, so that's one thing you can do. To me, a lot of times that fixes the problem. That's just an easy way that you can get a little bit more stability at the point of contact. Don't overdo it. For me, if I use the 5 8 grip, which is the biggest grip, I actually get a little bit of racket twisting that way. So grip size is a good way to prevent racket twisting at the point of contact. The second thing I would check to prevent racket twisting is actually going to be what racket are you using. I see a lot of beginner and intermediate players using uh, titanium based rackets, kind of that, what I would consider beginner rackets, the oversized head ones, uh, maybe weigh 9 ounces or even less. So they're lightweight rackets made of a titanium composite uh, that are really made just for beginner players. And what happens is as you get better and better and play players that are hitting a lot harder, at the point of contact, you need that stability. Uh, I'm not saying go out and spend $300 on a racket, but a lot of those rackets that do cost between two and 300, they cost that because they're built with really quality graphite. There's a lot of scientific terms you'll see out there like uh, braided graphite, uh, cortex feel, just off the top of my head. A lot of fancy scientific terms, but the reason why the racket costs so much it is, be is because it is a quality graphite. So at the point of contact, that quality graphite uh, and it's usually going to weigh a little bit more between maybe 10 and 12 ounces is really going to have a lot more plow through. The third thing I would check to prevent racket twisting is of course swing mechanics. A swing mechanics is by far the most important part of tennis. Give a professional tennis player a beginner racket, they're still going to be an extremely good tennis player. Give a, someone who's maybe just started playing tennis, still figuring out their game, give them the top of the line racket, still going to be a beginner player. Uh, just for one example, I would say, say you're getting used to playing tennis and maybe you're starting to go to a semi-western grip. I have a top spin pro here that I use. And say you're still going a little bit more linear rather than uh, a more modern swing, which lets that racket tip lag and kick up. If you go more linear, you're going to be framing a lot more shots because the racket's not going to be coming level. So if I go to my racket drop, and kicking up at the point of contact, I should be getting that nice clean contact just above the center of the string bed as I'm making contact with that ball. Easier said than done. I know it can be frustrating working on a, a tennis swing. It just takes a lot of reps. But if you're getting a racket twisting, a lot of it can be how you're approaching that shot. Uh, if you go to a more modern grip, the semi-western grip, uh, if you go like a full western, then you've really got to make sure your swing mechanics are going up to meet that ball in a more circular motion uh, because if you don't you can get some racket twisting by not using the proper swing mechanics. Best way to solve it, film your swing. If you need to find a, a good coach you can maybe give you some pointers to work on to make sure you're getting those good clean contacts no matter what grip you use whether it's an eastern, semi-western, full western that you're getting that good solid contact right above the center of the string bed that can really help prevent racket twisting at the point of contact. Fourth way to prevent racket twisting at the point of contact, I'll just talk about overgrips. 
Uh, first off, always change your overgrips. You can buy a lot of overgrips for pretty cheap. The underlying grip costs a bit more, but the thin overgrips, and they're usually about, I'd say, 0.5 to 0.7 millimeters thick, so you're not going to build up your grip too much. Overgrips are pretty cheap, so if you're playing tennis out in the heat, I know I sweat a lot. It's really the first thing to go uh, between sweat and uh, just getting dirty. So always make sure you're changing your overgrips out. So that can honestly be a very simple way to prevent racket twisting that you've been using the same overgrip. Say you play a few times a week and you're on a few months into it. That overgrip needs to be changed. So I like to use a little bit of a tacky overgrip. Um, I maybe sacrifice a little bit on sweat absorption but it gives me a little bit of a tacky feel, so I know when that tackiness wears off or that stickiness wears off, I just change out the overgrip and I'm ready to, to go and I have a really good grip on the racket. Uh, test out one that works for you, but change your overgrip a lot and find one that works for you. That can also help prevent racket twisting. And the last thing I'll mention to prevent racket twisting, uh, say you're using a great racket, you like your grip size, your swing mechanics are good, one simple thing you can do to get a little bit more stability at the point of contact is adding lead tape or tungsten tape, or now they have copper tape, uh, at your three and nine positions. 12, I would recommend you putting tape at the 12 o'clock position for more power. Uh, that should help racket twisting as well. But the three and nine traditionally will really help with stability at the point of contact. Uh, but putting it three and nine, say between five and 10 grams total, it's uh, pretty easy to put on, pretty easy to take off. You just want to put it uh, on the inside part of the frame here. Uh, and if you put, say, between 5 and 10 grams, you can kind of experiment what works for you. That'll definitely help with the more cloud through at the point of contact and help with racket twisting. Racket twisting can be very annoying and can really prevent you from hitting good, clean shots. So when you frame a shot and you don't get a, a, a good, clean tennis swing and you feel like you're doing it consistently, I hope that these tips helped you out as far as whether making sure you're using quality racket, the right grip size, changing your over grips, adding lead tape if you need to, and the most important part, as always, is swing mechanics, making sure uh, you're filming your swing and, and you can see your swing and, and making sure you're having someone who's qualified give you some pointers to make sure you're doing everything possible to get that good, clean contact point. This has been Drew from Frisco Tennis Shop, and I hope to talk soon. Bye.